got an emergency call out to this guy's house. Um, apparently there was some nuisance tripping when they were cooking last night. Uh, and then today it's just, it went off completely. So when I got here, this was in this position down. So what I did is, uh, and it, it wouldn't reset. Now it's reset because I found the fault. But uh, so the first thing that I did was that was down like that. So first thing I, and all these were up, yeah. So this RCD there is controlling cooker, lounge sockets, bedroom sockets, socket sockets. So everything up to here is RCD protected by that. And then everything this side is non RCD protected by the main switch. So the gentleman said to me, the lights are okay. When he rang me up, the lights are okay, but we haven't got any sockets. So that tells me that this is a dual split. Uh, sorry, just a split load board. Sorry, not dual split. So half RCD, half non RCD. And generally this side, you'll get less problems unless the MCB operates. Um, so I came here, it was like this. I turned all these down. This is the first thing that I, I would do. Turn that up and then flicked them all back on one by one. And they all came back on, apart from this one. When I turned that one on, it, fight, it tripped that out immediately. So, um, yeah, so I knew that it, so we isolated it to that circuit. Some, sometimes it's as easy as that to identify the circuit. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes that, that process doesn't work. And the gentleman's unplug all the sockets in the house um, to make sure it's not an appliance, which was right. And uh, that didn't work as well. So sometimes it's an actual wiring fault. And in this case, it is uh, a snagged cable on a back box, which is almost caught on fire, which tripped it out. Um, okay, so I'll leave it off for the minute and I'll show you the badge. Okay, so this room's isolated, the utility room and the conservatory. So the first thing I did was try and remove this socket here to see if the conservatory supply had been tapped off that, but that's already a spur, so it wasn't that. Previously, the gentleman mentioned that there'd been a problem with this heater, and this is the actual on the circuit that's got the problem. So looked at the heater, if you can see, it's black in there. Cables are black. So these have all shorted to the back box and almost caught on fire. So apparently someone's been back to repair this at some point, but this is how it's been left. So it's not been repaired. Um, and then this is actually what's causing the circuit to trip because the cap, that cable is catching on the back box again. So it must have just been pressing on the insulation enough over a period of time over the past few months for it to actually trip it out. So as I mentioned before, first pro, the only reason why I've come to this quickly is because Michael's told me they had problems with this previously. So that's narrowed that down and saved a lot of time. But my first process would be to split the circuit into half, which was in this room and in this room as well so you split the circuit i want it did the utility as well which is in here so we split the circuit in half and then see what we've got from that point as this conservatory has been done in the past 10 years or whatever uh, what i would normally assume is uh, from experience as well is anything that's been done previously or recently or like i said within the past five ten years um, generally workmanship, modern day workmanship these days is not as good as workmanship 20, 30, 50 years ago. So if anything, if I went to a house, I would presume the first thing I would do is I'd look at anything that's been done that's more modern than the rest of the house because this has been added onto the electrical circuit in the house. So, and I would have been a right, right to assume that. So if Michael Ant told me about this, the conservatory is the place I would have started with and this is where the problem was. So like I say, it would have been right to assume that uh, that was the case. Um, so I've cut the insulation down now. 
cut back so they're very short and uh, so when we put this back I'm just going to put some Wago connectors on it and put a blank plate on it for now just so when we put this back it's not going to touch that metal the damaged pit of the insulation isn't going to touch the box and blow this and blow it again and make it dangerous while I was here doing a few basic tests so just check that this ring is continuous while I'm here before I put this back and also just make sure the RCD is operating in the right times things like that so 0.54 for the live circuit neutral loop open circuit and Based on the reading of the live, which was 0.54, I would expect this to be about 0.8-ish, something like that, for the Earth. There's 1.2. So that means we've got some loose connections or, you know, loose or incorrect connections somewhere on the circuit. So this needs um, all the accessories taken off on this circuit remaking tight and then uh, putting back and seeing if that clears this uh, these poor readings up okay so way gold jointed bad insulation removed got damaged insulation removed should i say so just going to put that blank plate on there for now just so it's it just blocks that gap up i'm going to leave this heater disconnected as ask michael if he's if he needs the heater in the conservatory and they don't really use it that much. So I've just disconnected it for now until we can get, come and sort the rest of the problems out. So I've just done a, got the power back on now, just doing a bit of a loop test, make sure that the readings are okay, the earths are okay, that the MCB is gonna trip out in time. You know, in the meantime, that's okay. So I'm gonna advise a condition report for this as uh, when they bought the house four years ago nothing's been tested and no certificates were given for any installation work that's been done so you need to make sure that when you buying a house that you you ask for a condition electrical installation condition report to, uh, to prove that um, that everything's okay before you buy it because you could inherit somebody else's problems um, when you're buying the house and also you need to make sure that you're getting a, a decent electrician to do the condition report um, as you, I'll show you in one of our other videos we've had we've recently just done a load of work on another condition report on a house that's already had one when he bought it and they just did an awful job it looks like they probably didn't even get out of his van to do the condition report so you need to watch that as well who they've got in to do the actual installation condition report so yeah we're going to put this in for a condition report at some point and then we'll sort this ring problem out and help them find any other issues that the house may have all right so circuit was tripping out before that one is now back on after we've sorted that that cable problem in the conservatory everything's back up and running now all right all right we've just left michael's house now where we got the emergency call out and then we've advised a condition report because of what we found the few little things that we found so i expect when we do the condition report we're going to find a lot more problems that he's inherited this is quite a common case with pretty much all the condition reports that we do so if you want to check out our video and blog about uh, condition reports and a poor condition report that you're going to re you could potentially receive if you get somebody who's willing to just come in sign something off and not really care about what they're doing uh, generally people what we would say this is, is somebody's done it from their van so they've just basically come in waved a meter around at a few things you know said yeah no problem wrote, wrote some circuit details down not actually physically done any testing or a very little testing and also not took any accessories off, not took the consumer unit cover off, not done any thorough checks 
and could and could still have left it in a dangerous state and this is a qualified electrician potentially that's done this because now we've we've got condition reports from previous electricians that the customer said yeah we've had it done we look at it it's a legit company registered with the nic and they've done an absolutely awful job so it's just some stuff is down to people's interpretation of what is safe and what's not and some people are just just bad practice you know poor very very bad tradesmen even if they qualified and registered still terrible so yeah if you want to check out our other video uh, of this condition report it's quite a big house we show the condition report that the previous electrician has done we tell you what his his condition report would have cost we show you all the work that we've done and in depth how in depth our test sheets are and how much time is actually took and what we've charged for it so we give you an indication of what you should be expected to pay for a condition report in a certain size house. The bigger the house, the more consumer units, the more the condition report is going to be. So it's not just 150 quid or 200 quid for a condition report. That's not how it works. But that is generally what people have a kind of, um, how they work out and govern a cost of something. If you look online, that's what it generally will be but it's all down to size of installation, amount of faults that we find, amount of accessories we've got to remove, etc. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check that blog out and the video, just to make sure that you know what you're asking for when you sell or buy a house or um, what a good and a bad condition report looks like.